Papa.
In Jesus' name we pray. Let your fire fall. You are the most excellent God. As we gather in your name, let your fire fall. Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall. You are the most excellent God. As we gather in shall be silenced. Yeah. The altar you frequented when you did not know Christ and they're now calling you that you are not answering them and they are troubling you. They become your troublers. They shall be troubled tonight. Yeah. And that is the tone for this night deliverance agenda. So please partake of it. You will shout Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. You will now say enter into darkness. And destroy every altar calling my name for darkness. Can somebody remember that prayer? What is the prayer? We are targeting three things. The first one is the altar that is calling your name. The next one, I will tell you if you do this one very well. Are you ready? Let's go. Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. Enter into darkness and destroy every altar. Calling my name for darkness. In the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. Enter into darkness and destroy every altar. Calling my name for darkness. 
in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. In Jesus' name we pray. Close your eyes. Say, Holy Ghost fire. Go to my father's house. And kill that serpent. That is taking my name to the covens. So Holy Ghost fire. Go to my father's house. And kill that serpent. Taking my name to the covens. Shall we shout, Holy Ghost fire, go to my father's house and kill that serpent, taking my name to the covenant. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good job. This is the last one. What you are about to see happen, you will see fire that is leaking water. We can send fire into the waters. Whatever is in the waters that is representing you for barrenness, for loneliness, for rejection, whatever is in the waters that is representing you for barrenness, for loneliness, and for rejection, we will send the fire to enter into the waters and consume whatever is representing you in the local river of your native place, in the local river of where you are living right now, in whatever body of water where you are being represented, the fire shall work for you. Say, Holy Ghost, fire, enter into the waters. Say like you mean it. Shout it again. And consume whatever is representing me for darkness. For darkness. Say, Holy Ghost, fire, enter into the waters. And consume whatever is representing me for darkness. Begin to pray. Holy Ghost fire, enter into the waters and consume everything that is representing me for darkness. Send the fire. Holy Ghost fire, enter into the waters and consume everything that is representing me for darkness. Holy Ghost fire, enter into the waters. Enter into the local river of my native place. Enter into the Potomac. In the day we pray, before you see that, say Holy Ghost fire. Enter into the Potomac. Say like you mean it. And consume whatever is representing MFM Virginia for darkness. So Holy Ghost fire, enter into the Potomac. 
and consume whatever is representing MFM Virginia for darkness. <laughs> Shall we wow Holy Ghost fire, enter into the Potomac, and consume whatever is representing MFM Virginia for darkness? Holy Ghost fire, enter into the Potomac. Holy Ghost fire, enter into the Potomac. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you. Father, I bring whoever is here right now on listening to me. And they have been caught up in the crossfire of dark altars. Father, this night is their day of deliverance. Therefore, I am asking for the release of those angels giving charge over this transaction. That they will begin to work now. Father, I am asking by the time it is over, nobody will remain a captive Amen. of string altars Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, let your Holy Spirit, the minister of deliverance, go to work on behalf of every soul here represented and every soul that is listening, that your name alone will be given the glory. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Tell somebody say congratulations. Say here you are again. Caught in the crossfire of dark altars. Listen to me very carefully. If you open your Bible to Romans chapter 12, you will find a very important scripture that is taking us to the a destination of why this topic has to come today. If you are here, listen to me very carefully. If you are here and you know, you went to a native doctor, you went to a shaman, you went to do something, and they did it for you, and it worked. <laughs> Especially that time you went there, you were not a Christian. Or your parents went somewhere, or your ancestors went somewhere, but now you have become a Christian. If you fall into any of those categories I just mentioned, you must be interested in the power altars and the power of altars is not a power that is easy to deal with it is a power that is elusive it is a power that dribbles deliverance minister the power of altars is a strange power when we say an altar Romans chapter 12 so I beseech you, therefore, brethren, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. If your body is a living sacrifice, sacrifice always go with altar. It means you are a living altar. Something has transpired between you as an altar and many other altars that you are no longer paying attention to. What is an altar? An altar is a place of divine encounter. What is an altar? An altar is a place of fellowship with the spirit world. What is an altar? An altar is a place of communion with the realm of the spirit. What is an altar? An altar is a gateway that connects the physical with the spiritual realm. What is an altar? An altar is a gate. What is an altar? An altar is a place of meeting. What is an altar? An altar is a place of power. What is an altar? An altar is a place to derive power to deal with your enemies. What is an altar? An altar is a place where you go to set altar against altar. When the spirit fights, altars are fighting. Tell somebody. When the spirit fights, altars are fighting. So whenever you think spirit, think Altars. Tell somebody. First of all, look at the tabernacle. What the moment you open the gate, the first thing you will see is an altar. That is a deep secret. No spirit can be without altar. All spirits, demonic and otherwise, they must transact by and through and with altars. I repeat, 
spirit must transact with altars. They are represented in the physical world most directly by altars. If you mess with the brazen altar, or you mess with the altar of incense, or you mess with the Ark of Covenant itself, that is an altar also, because it takes blood sacrifice once a year. They will mess with you. But when you are fighting, when there is a fight in the spirit realm, it is a fight of the altars. When two spirits are fighting, it is their altar that you will see in the physical that is fighting. An altar is also first a spiritual entity. Though it is physically represented, but it is spiritual. Everything you see in the tabernacle, there is a replica in, in the court of heaven. This is just a physical representation. So now I want to show you where altar fights in the Bible. Open your Bible to 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18. Caught up in the crossfire of dark altars. Caught up in the crossfire of dark altars. Why would we be caught up in the crossfire of dark altars? Because altars are confronting each other. Now you have come to Christ. You have come to the altar we call the cross of Christ. This altar of Christ is the supreme. In fact, it's the ultimate of altars. In fact, there is no other altar that is higher than the altar of the cross of Christ. In fact, when you come to the altar of Christ, the issues of altars is settled permanently and forever, for eternity. There can be no altar higher than the altar of the cross of Christ. And when you run to that altar, the altars you are running from, they will pursue you. And the altar you are running to, trying to protect you, there will be fire. And the altar that is pursuing you, there will be fire. If you are careless, you will be caught up in the crossfire of these altars. We know the fire of God will not burn the thing that belongs to God. But if the thing that belongs to God is covered up with what does not belong to God, the fire will burn. That is the case of many of us. Though we carry the Holy Spirit, which is a living fire, but we carry other things in our flesh that is covering it and making us to look as if we don't know God. So come with me very carefully and listen to what we are going to use this scripture to do right now. First King chapter First Kings chapter 18. I read from verse 21. Um, that thing is cut up in the hedges. Let's fix it. Amen. If you are here, pay attention to how it is going to happen. And Elijah came to all the people and said, how long will you falter between two opinions. If the Lord is God, follow him. But if they have, follow him. But the people answered him, not a word. Then Elijah said to the people, I alone am left a prophet of the Lord. But they as prophet are 450 men. Therefore, let them give us two bulls and let them choose one bull for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it on the wood, but no fire under it. Pay attention, lay it on the wood. He did not mention altar. The fact that he did, he did not mention altar doesn't mean that it is, it is not an altar. You see, that fire, that wood is an altar. Things can become altar all of a sudden. A human being, though you may be a living altar, you can become another altar very quickly. Let me share this with somebody before I go further in that. You can become an altar very, very quickly, and you will know you have become an altar. Watch this. See that? 
Everybody in that, I don't know how clear that picture is. Everybody in that picture, eh, by the virtue of what they are doing right now, they have become altars. You may think they are having fun. Do you understand? But by virtue, you see, those who put the lift on their head, they have become super altars. <laughs> this is how a human being, all of a sudden, can be turned into an altar. Not the living altar that your body that it, is your body now, but by what you choose to carry on your body, on your head, and on your hands. Whatever you carry that is turning you to a strange altar, I ask it to catch fire. Amen. See, whatever I carry that is turning me to a strange altar, catch fire. Yeah. Can you shout very quickly? Whatever I carry that is turning me to a strange altar, catch fire in the name of Jesus. Whatever I carry that is turning me into a strange altar, catch fire. Whatever I carry that is turning me into a strange altar, Jesus' name we pray. Some of us, we carry spirits on us that we don't even know we carry. I'm coming there in a moment. Therefore, let them give us two bowls and let them choose one bowl for themselves, cut it in pieces and lay it on the wood and put no fire under it. And I will prepare the other bowl and lay it on the wood and put no fire under it. Then you call on the name of your gods. Mark the word plural. You cannot find God in singular. They are not available. The gods are not available in the singular. For those who are yet to grab that, grab it now. The gods are not available in the singular. Tell somebody. Yes. They always come plural, multiples. They are not sufficient. Only Jehovah is sufficient. I cannot overemphasize that truth that many of us overlook. Then call on the name of your gods. And now we call on the name of the Lord, one God, Shema Yisrael. And the God who answers by fire, he is God. When the, earth, when the spirits fight, they fight by altars. See, the prophets of Baal are going to set up their own altars. God is going to set up his own altar. If you look at the transaction of both altars, there are many truths, many laws that you will see in action in the two altars they are going to set up right now. Even if you look at the way they set it up, you'll, you'll be surprised how we can use that knowledge to fight the battle of strange altars that is tormenting man. Man is being tormented by the battles of strange altars. It is only those who know Christ and know his cross as an altar that can surmount those battles. Unfortunately, very few Christians know about it. Altars, they are like spirits. They don't die. But we can decommission them with the power of the cross of Christ. Every altar that is crying at the edge of your breakthrough. And use the power of the cross of Christ to silence it. Amen. Every altar crying when good things must happen to you. I use the power of the cross of Christ to silence it. Amen. Say every altar crying at the edge of my breakthrough. Say the altar of the cross of Christ silence it. Say every altar crying at the edge of my breakthrough. Say the altar of the cross of Christ, silence it. Shall we pray every altar crying at the edge of my breakthrough? 
altar of the cross of Christ, silence it. Every altar crying at the edge of my breakthrough. Altar of the cross of Christ, silence it. In Jesus' name we pray. So they took the bull which was given them and they prepared it and called on the name of Beha from morning even till noon, saying, Oh, Beha, hear us. But there was no voice, no one answered. Then they leaped upon the altar which they had made. Let me warn you, these people, they have done this successfully before. Let me warn you. They were very confident that fire will come out. Baal is a fire god. Baal is representation of the sun. They have been bringing fire before. On the day your star must shine, every other star must go down. Amen. On the day your star must rise and shine. No other star shall cover you. Amen. On the day you must answer the call of your maker for great things. You will not answer the call of darkness. Amen. Amen is not resounding. Listen very carefully. So them bringing fire, God shut them down. Every shall shut down the strange altars fighting against your destiny. Amen. They had the capacity to bring fire. Remember in the case of Pharaoh, he puts his everything that Moses do, the magicians of Pharaoh would do us. The devil has power. Only that the power of our God is absolute. So see what they just did there? God shut them down. I pray again for you. On the day you must shine, your competitor shall be shut down. <laughs> I have a prayer on that in a minute. But I want you to listen to me now. And so it was noon. Elijah mocked them and said, cry aloud. What did he do? When Elijah was going to bring fire, he did something strange that we have just used to pray now. When we send fire into the waters, it is unusual. He poured water on the altar. He took 12 stones that represented the 12 tribe of Israel, highly symbolic, and pour water, pour water. And I now call God that answers by fire. And the God answered by fire. Two altars were fighting. If, if you read it, let's read verse 20. Um, 30. Then Elijah said to all the people, come near to me. So all the people came near to him. He repaired the altar. Say, repair the altar. Repair the altar. Say, repair the altar. Repair the altar. He repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took 12 stones, according to the numbers of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Israel shall be your name. Then with the stones, he built an altar in the name of the Lord. Altars are always in the name. That is why you will not find a spirit without altar. If you want to attack the spirit attacking you, set their altar ablaze. In fact, the Bible says, tear down their altars. Say, tear down their altars. Say, tear down their altars. Tear down their altars. Say, I tear down the altars of my father's house that will not let me go. Say, tear down their altars. Say, I tear down the altars of my father's house that will not let me go. Say, tear down the altars. Say, I tear down the altars of my father's house that will not let me go. Shall we pray? Tear down the altar. I tear down the altars of my father's house that will not let me go. Tear down the altars. Tear 
down the altars. I tear down the altars of my mother's house that will not let me go. In Jesus' name we pray. The Lord is saying somebody needs to use the altar that will not allow my story to shake. Say, tear down the altars. Say, I tear down the altar that will not allow my story to shake. Begin to shout, tear down the altar. I tear down the altar that will not allow my story to shake. Tear down the altar. I tear down the altar that will not allow my story to shake. Tear down the altar. I tear down the altar that will not allow my story to shake. Tear down the altar. I tear down the altar that will not allow my story to shake. Tear down the altars. Tear down the altars. I tear down the altar that will not allow my story to shake. Tear down the altars. In Jesus' name we pray. Good job. Now you are doing well. Now you are doing well. Now you are doing well. You have done a good job. Somebody just did a wonderful job. My congratulations. Somebody hit the target. Listen very carefully. Listen. When you are caught up in the crossfire, I want to show you a crossfire. Listen very carefully. After he made the own altar, verse 33, he put the wood in order, cut the wood in pieces, and laid it on the wood, and said, fill four water pots with water, and pour it on the bone sacrifice, and on the wood. Then he said, do it a second time, and he did it a second time. And he said, do it a third time, and he did it a third time. So the water ran all around the altar and he also filled the drink with water. This is an impossible situation but we serve the God of impossibility. Yeah. This situation, you can't be looking for fire and be pouring water. It doesn't make sense. But our God is a God that does not make sense. He will shut down protocols for your sake. When God wants to promote you, all your competitors will be turned down. Amen. Uh, yeah, is not in yeah. When God wants to promote you, he will turn down all your competitors and rivals. Yeah. But see, the God that did it for Elijah will do it for you tonight. Yeah. It came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, and I am your servant. And I have done all these things at your word. Every time you come to the sanctuary, you are coming at the word of God. You are not just coming by yourself. You come because the word asks you to come. And you have come. Your story must change. Yeah. The battles of strange altars that have been following you around, we are about to bury them now. Yeah. Listen very carefully. The fire did not fail. Hear me, O oh Lord, hear me, that these people may know that you are the Lord God and that you have turned their hearts back to you. Then the fire of the Lord fell. Let the fire yeah, for the fire did what? fair. The fire that failed to fall at the call of the prophets of Baal shall fall when you call your own God. Yeah. The fire of your enemy that failed to fall, your own fire shall swallow them. Yeah. But you know what? Say the fire licked up the water. That's what is strange. Then when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord... He is God, the Lord. He is God. But the battles of altars is not over. 
He got the victory, right? He seized the prophets of Baal and did what? Executed them. See what the other altar will now do. You, you thought the altar was silent, right? That is why when you win a battle, don't go sleeping. Many of us, it, oh, I'm looking for a breakthrough. I got it. Now I can do what I like. Ah, you made a big mistake. In fact, it is when you get a breakthrough, you will double up in your prayer. It is when God answers your prayer one time, then you will, now, you will increase your tempo of prayer. But many people in the Christian world, once they get what they thought they are looking for, they will now relax. That is a great mistake that I don't want anybody listening to me tonight to fall into and make. When God answers you, double up in your service to that God. Double up in your worship. Double up in your attendance. Double up in your reading of the Bible. Don't go down. Don't relapse. Amen. But see what happened. The drought ends, right? But if you read chapter 19, just the very next chapter, Elijah escapes from Jezebel. Elijah did what? If you see how he ranted, when Jezebel came, Jezebel has her own altar. This altar was silenced by Elijah. But those altars were not dead. They were now ready to fight back. And Elijah is now caught up in the crossfire of altars. See what is going to happen. So Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and also how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. The altar of God has reigned supreme. But what, what, did, what did she do? Then Jezebel sent a messenger to her saying, so let the gods do to me and more also. If I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Every threat of by tomorrow about this time against your destiny may the threat backfire. Yeah. Whoever are threatening that they will not rest until you die, they shall surely die and you shall live. Listen, when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life. The other author is pursuing him now. So you can never be too confident. You need God 24 7. You need the Holy Spirit 24 7. Don't say, because I do exploits, I am a big, I am a big, you are a big in nothing. You need the Holy Spirit even in your moment of victory. Because, because the devil is not going to leave, he's going to come back. He, the Bible says, tempted Jesus. And he didn't make it. He said he left him for a season. Meaning what? He is coming back. Every returning devil, they shall crash land. <laughs> now, I have to close it here now. But he himself went on a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat under a tree and prayed that he might die. How can somebody that called down fire say now he died? Cross fire. He got victory, but now he's being pursued. That altar is beginning to fire. The altar of Christ is the supreme altar. You have run to it. The one that are pursuing you now and are firing after you, we shall fire back at them. Amen. That is what we are got to do. Listen, the, if you went to a palm reader. The first thing they ask you that you give to them is you are just giving them a permission to look into your soul. You just open up yourself for them. Uh, it's like you go naked. By the time you hand over anything that belongs to you to them, you hand over your soul. And what's going to happen? They will now begin to look into your soul. And gather all your sick, and they begin to tell that you to be jumping. They, they told me what I what I didn't know. Yes, because we gave them something to take and look into you. And they begin to tell these stories. But 
the altar that was set up, you can't initiate worship and stop it without consequence. Tell somebody. Shall we rise? So, where you went for help and they help you. You see, I, I always use myself as an example. <laughs> I told you what happened to me and they had to do conversion. To, to stop conversion. Whatever ritual they did, it was by an altar. Now that I have come to Christ, that altar will still be calling. It behoves me now to say, hey, 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 hey. I have the altar of the cross of Christ. Be silent. If you don't silence them, they will continue to rage. We call it the evil rage of dark altars. I pray for you. Every evil rage of dark altars you frequented in the past, let the rage die. Yeah. Say the evil rage of the dark altars I frequented in the past, die. Begin to pray the evil rage of the dark altars. Please pray the evil rage of the dark altars I frequented in the past. Please pray, please pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Verse 10. Everybody, can you read together verse 10? Let's go. The other altar is now pursued. I have been very zealous. He was not complaining. Lord, look at what is happening. Altars don't die. But we can decommission them with the power of the altar of the cross of Christ. Yes. Where we went to in the past to get help. And we are no longer consulting. They will fight. Everywhere we went to in the past to get help that was not kingdom, they are now coming back to fight us. If you agree with what I'm saying, lay your hand on your chest and say, Lord Jesus, have mercy upon me. Say, have mercy upon my parents. Have mercy upon my ancestors. Have mercy upon what we have done. Forgive our sins. Forgive our trespasses. Say, Lord Jesus, if I am none of yours, give me a repentant heart and a godly sorrow for my sins and make me one of yours. Say, Lord Jesus, if I am none of yours, give me a repentant heart and the godly sorrow for my sins and make me one of yours in the name of Jesus. What, why I be standing, I want you to just list them one by one as you enter into the prayer. I want you to breathe, just say, shake your body, shake your body, because what the prayer you are about to take now, they have repercussion. How do you know that you are caught in the crossfire? One, how do you know Number one, if you don't like prayer, or prayer is a battle, know you are caught in the crossfire of strange altars. Two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight. That is our job next week. Because many of us, this is the case because we have been caught in the crossfire of dark altars. They are not contending with our Christ. If they are contending with our Christ, it's because they are contending with the cross of Christ. They can never win, but they will contend. And that contention, if you don't know how to stop it, it can become a casualty. I will share with you next week how to stop it. But now I want to pray. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. say any power, any power that wants to smuggle a serpent into my body to turn me into a common blood sacrifice. Die in the name of Jesus. Can you shout any power? Everybody shout. Please shout again. Touch your body and shout. Touch your body. In Jesus' name we pray. Say any power that wants to use a serpent to turn me into a sacrifice in the coven. These are activities of strange altars. Can you say it again? Let the power die. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray. Any power that wants to use a serpent to turn me into a sacrifice in the covenant, let the power die. In Jesus' name we pray. Now I want you to shout very take an offering. You say every document of breakthrough rejecting my name. It could be a marriage certificate. It could be a mortgage. It could be a driver's license. Somebody's listening to me now. Driver's license can be rejecting your name and you don't know why. Take an offering in your hand. You will run through these next few prayers aggressively with that offering in your hand. As many as are joining online on Facebook, on YouTube, please take an offering in your hand. Don't say because you are by yourself. Something is about to happen with this next prayer you are going to say on that offering. Are you ready? Let's go. Can you shout? Shout it again. Let's go. Please pray. Touch your head, touch your head. In every glory contest heading my way. In every glory contest heading my way. Oh Lord, lift up my head above my competitors. Lift up my head. Lift up my head. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's go. Pray on that offering.
Amen. 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 We still keep that offering in your hand. Keep that offering in your hand. Shout the next prayer. Say power. Power. Amen. There's something wrong here. Shout again. Let's go. Say it again. Amen. Amen. Take that offering close to your mouth. Say, power that I vowed that over their dead body will I make it in life. Will I make it in marriage? Will I make it in career? Say, power that I vowed that over their dead body will I make it in life. Say, so be it. I have made it in Christ. Pray now, power that I vowed that over their dead body will I make it in life. So be it. I have made it in Christ in the name of Jesus. Power that I vowed that over their dead body will I make it in life. So be it. Power that I vowed that over their dead body will I make it in life. So be it. I have made it in Christ. I have made it. Power that I vowed that over their dead body. In Jesus' name we pray. Say the God that shut down Baal on Mount Carmel. Shut down the hydros of my enemies. Accepting sacrifice to attack me. In the name of Jesus, the God that shut down Baal on Mount Carmel. Shut down. Shut down the hydros of my enemies. Accepting sacrifice to attack me. The God that shut down Baal on Mount Carmel, shut down the idols of my enemies, accepting sacrifice. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, accept this offering. Accept it as you would the sacrifice of Christ. By these prayers tonight, let there be testimonies. Testimony that will convert other souls to Christ. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Close. Say the God that shut down Baal on Mount Carmel. Shut down the idols of my enemies. Accepting worship to put me to shame. Shall we shout the God that shut down Baal on Mount Carmel? Shut down the idols of my enemies. Accepting worship to put me to shame. In the name of Jesus, the God that shut down Baal on Mount Carmel, shut down the idols of my enemies that are accepting worship to put me to shame. The God that shut down Baal on Mount Carmel. Shut down the idols of my enemies, accepting worship to put me to shame in the name of Jesus, the God that shut down Baal on Mount Carmel. Shut down the idols of my enemies. In Jesus' name we pray. I pray for you again. Everywhere they have been looking for you to shed tears. As from today, the only tears you shall shed are tears of joy. Everywhere they have been waiting for you to cry. The enemy that wants you to cry shall cry in your place. Everywhere they have counted you out that you can never make it. The God of heaven that brought you here has declared your victory tonight. I pray your closest desire that only you and God know has suddenly become a testimony. In the name of the Father, Amen. in the name of the Son, Amen. in the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Say any attack because of my deliverance. Amen. Say backfire seven times in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray in the name of Jesus any attack because of my deliverance? 